Breathe in deeply. Breathe out completely. Breathe in the breath of life, the spirit, filling you with light and love and grace for this time of worship. You are here. We are here together. God is with you. You are not alone. Breathe in deeply. Breathe out completely. I invite you to take this time for you, for your relationship with God, for your part in the body of Christ. As we gather together virtually, the spirit is with us. Know that during this time, God hears your prayers, your song. We invite you to sing along with our music, to follow along with the prayers to do all the things that you would normally do in a church building, but together online. So we'll take a few moments for some meditative music. Would you be able to mute yourself? We're having a few moments of just meditation. Okay. Thank you. Oh, welcome to worship with us this morning. I am so glad you are all here. I'm so glad you have figured out how to join us virtually on Facebook or on Zoom. We'll be uploading this to YouTube later for folks to join us after our service concludes, welcome. I hope that you're able to experience the Holy Spirit with you in your home through this virtual experience. Oh, and so let us begin. 
Welcome to worship with us today. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. I invite you to share a sign of peace with those in your home. If you are on our Facebook Live, I invite you to share a sign of peace in the comments. And if you are home alone, but with us on Zoom, I invite you to share a peace sign as we share God's peace with one another. Our opening song this morning is Why Did You Care? as we continue in this season of Lent together. I'm so grateful for Dorothy, our musician, for sending in piano recordings, for my spouse Greg for helping me sing, and for Renee for sending in her voice as well for our songs this morning. Thank you all. If you are interested in uh, sending in your voice to add to our virtual praise team, please let me know. I'm going to be putting together a how-to video later this afternoon. And so now we continue in our service. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who is present, who gives life, who calls into existence the things that do not exist. Amen. If you were to keep watch over sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet with you is forgiveness, and so we confess. Gracious God, have mercy on us. 
We confess that we have turned away from you knowingly and unknowingly. We have wandered from your resurrection life. We have strayed from your love for all people. Turn us back to you, O God. Give us new hearts and right spirits that we may find what is pleasing to you and dwell in your house forever. Amen. Receive good news. God turns to you in love. I will put my spirit in you and you shall live, says our God. All your sin is forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the free and abounding gift of God's grace for you. Amen. I invite you to pray with me our prayer of the day. Almighty God, your son came into the world to free us all from sin and death. Breathe upon us the power of your spirit that we may be raised to new life in Christ and serve you in righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We'll continue with our worship with music.
Ezekiel chapter 37 verses 1 through 14. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones, and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded. And as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together bone to bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied and he, as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord, when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Psalm 130 Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. If you were to keep watch sins, O Lord, who could you stand? Yet with you is forgiveness, in order that you may be feared. I wait for you, O, o Lord. My soul waits, and your word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who keep watch for the morning. More than those who keep watch for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for the for with the Lord there is steadfast love. With the Lord there is plenteous re redemption, for the Lord shall redeem Israel from all their sins. Romans eight, verses six through eleven. To set the mind on the flesh is death. But to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, through the body is dead. And though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life 
to your mortal bodies. Also, through his spirit, spirit dwells, that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel reading for today is from John chapter 11, verses 1 through 45. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sister sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you. And are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. When she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! 
the dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday. So, coming to you from my house. First of all, I want to thank you for praying for me. I know several of you have been doing that, so I am home. I am okay. So, also, I want to give many thanks and blessings to Pastor Megan for all of her tech work that she's been doing. It's so tremendous, and it's kept us connected, and so I'm blessed by that. So, also, uh, this Sunday was supposed to be a lay Sunday, and... Pastor Megan and her family, were, they're supposed to be in Disneyland. So, so I talked with Pastor Megan and she said, do you have a message ready to go? And I said, yeah. And she said, okay, well, why don't we do it? So, so we're going to do it. So I'm bringing to you the message this morning on this lay Sunday. So I just wanted to start in, first of all, with the picture that's on the wall. Thank you, Pastor Megan, for putting it up there. So... Look at these bones. So imagine a whole valley of this. Just a whole lot of nothing going on. Dry, parched, nothing. And God says to Ezekiel, can these bones live? And I gotta tell you, if it was me, I would have said, nope, 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 and really, no. So, but Ezekiel was really wise, and in his faith, he responded to God like this. He says, O oh, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. So God says to Ezekiel, prophesy to the bones. So in faith, Ezekiel did. And the result was, the bones came to life. And God breathed breath back into them. And they became living. So from restoration of nothing, to this restoring and life. And then God says, this is what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to, this is what I'm going to do for the restoration of Israel. I'm going to bring back restoration and life. So we fast forward to the gospel and we have something very similar. So here's Jesus. He finally gets to his friend's house. Everybody is weeping and there's darkness because Lazarus has died. And he gets to, to the house of Mary and Martha, and he tells Martha to take away the stone. And again, if it were me, I would have said, really, God? So, I don't know about that. But Martha, she had a very similar reaction. So what she said to, to Jesus was, and I'll read it, but Lord, he's been here four days. And then Jesus has an amazing response. He says to Martha, Did I not tell you if you believed you would see the glory of God? So in faith, they rolled away the stone. And the result was the same. So Jesus calls forth Lazarus and death was turned back into life. And Jesus made an amazing statement that just reverberates through the ages and what he said was in that time he said I am the resurrection and the life so I started reading these scriptures and I said well how are they connected in our, our service this morning and here's what I learned from reading and studying and we'll put it up on the wall when it seems impossible God can make a way so God brings to us life Sometimes just even beyond our wildest imagination, when sometimes it just seems that all hope is lost. So from nothing to restoration in life. And so, and here's what else I learned too from studying was God is the restoration and the life. So, and even in our psalm it says, in God is our hope. So in nothing else, in God is our restoration and life. So even in nothing, even in weeping, even in darkness, even in Lent, even in a pandemic, 
God is life, and he brings life to us, and God can restore us in ways sometimes that we can't even imagine. So, and God can restore hope in times where everything seems hopeless because it's all about God. And so God can bring us from this to this. And God moves us from this to this. And God can restore us from this to this. So before I close this brief message, my sister Mary Clifton is with us and she's going to be singing us a song called Come Alive. And it talks about the dry bones that come alive, the nothing that comes alive because God breathes into us life. So uh, I was, if you have a chance here at home, take a piece of paper, spend a moment as Mary sings a song, get a pen, just jot down a few things. What is it in our lives that are dry bones right now that needs restoration? What is it in our society that are dry bones right now that needs restoration? Obviously that comes to mind is the coronavirus that we need restoration in this thing. So what is it, is it in our families that needs restoration in life? What is it? So and speak to that and speak to the Lord about that and so because God is the one who brings us restoration in life so there's another picture that's going on the wall take a look at it really quickly let it soak into you this picture of movement from nothing and dry to green and life and listen to Mary's song and spend some time in prayer because Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Amen.
Thank you so much, Dorothy, for sharing your message. Thank you, Ingebo family, for uh, sharing our readings with us today. And I invite you now to join me in, as we continue in our worship service. God has made us new people through our baptism into faith or our baptism into Christ and our response of faith. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to join me now in a time of prayer. If you are in our uh, Facebook Live, uh, when we invite our congregation to lift up prayers, I invite you to comment those down below. If you are in our Zoom call, you're welcome to use our chat or just lift up prayers in your home this morning. <sighs> Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of life, bind your faithful people into one body, enliven the church with your spirit, and bless the work of those who work for its renewal. Accomplish your work of salvation in us and through us for the sake of the world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of life, you love the world you have made, and you grieve when creation suffers. Restore polluted lands and waterways. Heal areas of the world ravaged by the COVID-19 virus, storms, floods, wildfires, droughts, or other natural disasters. Bring all things to new life. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God of life, show redemption to all who watch and wait with eager expectation, those waiting for quarantines and self-isolation to be lifted, those waiting to gather again with friends and families, those longing for wars to cease, those waiting for immigration paperwork to finalize, those seeking election, and those in dire need of humanitarian relief. Come quickly with your hope. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God of life, you weep with those who grieve. Unbind all who are held captive by anxiety, despair, or pain. Especially today, we pray for the Taco family, the Custer family, the Yaki family, for Ruth Sealer and Alicia Gates, for Sharon Ann, for the Hicks family, for Ray Davenport, for the Reese family, for Amy Thibodeau, for the Milheiser family, for Barb Clausen, for the Limpak family, for Merlene Ron, and for Eric Arnitz. We lift up to you, Lord Kay's grandma. We lift up all healthcare workers, all child care givers, all essential workers who are helping this world to continue to move. We pray for Eric Kister for continued healing. We pray for Ardeth and Rick's daughter-in-law working at a hospital in Sacramento. We pray for Beth Milheiser's sister Donna in ICU in Portland. We lift up prayers of thanksgiving for my sister, Olivia, who tested negative for the coronavirus and is already starting to feel better. We pray for the Moeller family, for Wayne Spriggle's brother, Lanny, for Michaela Hamilton's aunt, Esther, for all priests, pastors, rabbis, imams, and other religious leaders as they try to guide their people through this time, for the safety of Denise and Krista, who are both employed at Swedish, in hospital, Swedish Hospital in Seattle. Fill us with compassion and empathy for those who struggle and keep us faithful in prayer. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. 
God of life, we give thanks for opportunities for this congregation to collaborate with our community in caring for the needs of our neighbors, strengthen our ties with other local congregations, agencies, and services. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. At this time, I invite the people of God for what does our virtual congregation pray for today? We lift up Richard and Linda Price for Levi Migno, the return to health for Barbara Price. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God of life, you are our resurrection. Remember all those who have died and trust that in you they will live again. Breathe new life into our dry bones that we too might live with you forever. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. According to your steadfast love, O oh God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. If you would like to have any of your prayers added to our prayer chain, you are welcome to comment on our Facebook uh, live feeds right now, email me, uh, text or call, or you can also contact Susan with your prayer concerns. Her information is in our announcements. We lift our voices, our hands, our lives up to our Lord in response to the generous gifts God shares with us each week. We share our gifts for ministry in our offering. To continue with your offering from home, checks may be mailed to the church office. You can also give electronically. Visit bethanylongview.org slash coronavirus for links to give online or via our Give Plus app. We give thanks for the gifts God shares with us. We give thanks for the abundant life God brings us and we give thanks for you. We're going to be moving on to our offering song next, and just a reminder that we will be having communion today, so if you would like to participate and receive communion at home, please be sure to have bread or juice or wine or water ready so we can commune with one another.
I invite you to join me now in our offering prayer. Holy and generous host, you invite us to gather in all manners of ways. Prepare us to witness to your goodness with every gift you have given to us to share, that all people may know your peace through Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. On the night our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he was gathered with his disciples. He took bread, broke it, blessed it, and gave it them to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way Jesus took the cup, he blessed it, and he gave it to them to drink, saying, Take and drink, all of you. This is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. I invite you to join me in praying the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All are welcome to the Lord's table. You do not need to be a member of our church or our denomination to commune with us virtually. We invite you during this time to feel the Spirit's presence and join the entire body of Christ together. You may use bread or wine or juice or water in your home. You may give to one another or listen to my voice saying, this is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ given for you. You may also choose to fast from communion today and hear this blessing. You belong to God. You are loved. You are not alone. Amen. God's love is poured out in Christ for you. Open yourselves to receive it. During this time, we'll have some communion music playing just for a few short minutes while me and my family receive communion. I invite you to take this time to share communion or to share a time of prayer and meditation together.
We thank you, living God, for the body and blood of your Son, which sustains us in the wilderness and the garden alike. As Christ has loved us in this feast, so send us to love Christ in our neighbors. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Holy God, speaking, spoken, and inspiring, bless you, unbind you, and send you in love and in peace. Amen. Our closing song is What Wondrous Love Is This? I invite you to join us in singing together. for you there. <laughs> I hope that you'll be excited to join us. Our kids have been working on putting together a skit for our Small Seeds Palm Sunday next week. One thing to note, we'll still be doing communion, so have your communion elements ready. And also, um, because it's Palm Sunday and we won't be at the church for our usual palm leaf parade to celebrate Jesus' triumphant entry, I hope that if you have some leaves around or some big branches that you want to bring inside next Sunday, or if you don't want to do that, uh, the other option is to actually, um, oh, someone is not muted. Let me make sure that we get everybody. Oh, it's Greg. That was me. Sorry. <laughs> um, but have some coats ready because that's the other thing that people laid on Jesus's feet. It wasn't just palm leaves in front of him. It was cloaks. 
So have your, you know, empty out your winter closet and get ready to lay some cloaks down and wave them around for our Small Seeds Palm Sunday worship next week. A few announcements before we dismiss. Um, we are continuing with our phone calls. So our Zoom folks will be on for a little bit for a brief coffee hour. But if you're at home and even after our Zoom call ends, I really invite you to call one another, call your church family, touch base, just connect and have those conversations you would be having in our fellowship hall, but instead have them over the phone. There are also, um, we don't actually have to do a Facebook watch party at one o'clock today because we were able to be live the entire time. So that's so exciting. So you can watch our uh, service whenever you need to. And uh, it'll be uploaded to YouTube shortly uh, once I we get all done with all of this. Uh, Tuesday morning, breakfast group phone calls and Women of Bethany phone calls. I invite you in the normal time that breakfast group or women's Bible study would be meeting that you call one another and share in that time together. On Wednesday, we have our Moms with Young Children book club on Zoom at 10 a.m. And then at four o'clock, we have our Small Seeds and Sprouts Zoom call. And then we'll have our final Wednesday night worship service. Uh, the Zoom will open at 5.30 Wednesday night, and then our worship will begin at six o'clock. And so I hope you will join us for that. Um, we are going to be doing a Monday Thursday service on Thursday, April 9th with our uh, friends at Stella Lutheran Chapel. And then we will be doing a Good Friday service on Friday, April 10th with Gloria Day and Trinity via Zoom and Facebook Live and YouTube and all of those places. So uh, if you have been enjoying those Wednesday nights, there's still one last big week as we start Holy Week. I get to dye my hair pink, which is already faded to a very light pastel lavender pink. Um, so I'm excited to go pink, pink. Um, we'll see if I can find a dye in my house. And so I hope you will join us for all of those things. Our church council has voted to keep our church closed at least through April while schools are closed. So we will be doing Easter Sunday um, online and we've got some really exciting plans for it. So I hope that you will join us for that as we celebrate the coming resurrection of our Lord because um, I can tell you, Greg and I have been recording and singing songs and my dog got locked up here. That's okay, she's fine. Um, I'll show you her. But Greg and I have been singing songs ahead of time and we got to the Easter songs and we both just were like, oh, Lent is almost over. We're almost there, guys. We can do it. If you uh, need help or want to help with any of the worship stuff, please let me know. I'm going to be putting together a how-to video of how to record uh, doing the readings and how to record uh, adding your vocals to our virtual praise team. So look for that later today. Um, and there will be an email with that link to that video sent out later this week by our secretary, Kim, who has been continuing to do amazing work. And we have been um, so grateful for her. And her and I have been working to try and only send out a few uh, emails a week instead of, you know, every day. I learned the lesson last week that uh, by sending her emails throughout the weekend, by Monday morning, half the emails I sent were incorrect because things have been changing so quickly. So I hope you will mark us on your calendars for all of those experiences. I hope you will continue calling one another and connecting with one another. And if there are any other announcements, please make sure to email or text or call them to me so that way I can include them in our next worship services. And I invite you. Oh, Anna, you're eating a block. Oh, you guys want to see my dog? Here, come here. This is, oh, maybe not. Come here, Anna. No, it's like, come. This is a uh, Princess Anna puppy doggy. And uh, Hadley got to name her, obviously. And she is very sweet, scruffy rascal. So that is my, my, my family update. <laughs> oh, okay. So our last and final thing before we finish our service. Mm-hmm. Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God. Amen. Have a wonderful morning, have a wonderful day. And remember to stay connected and to continue to follow directions to stay safe. We miss you, we love you all.